Hey, thanks for coming back to the channel. Project videos are some of my favorite to make and some of the most viewed on the channel, like the iPod mod videos number 86 and 88. A simple LED on-air light project earlier this week quickly got me sidetracked when I came across these LED backlit API style buttons that I bought some months back. And I really just kind of decided I needed a USB transport control when I came across these things again. Project boxes are great, but finding just the right one can be a challenge online. Looking around the shop for something to reuse, this vintage Whirlwind Direct box seemed perfect. I picked it up on eBay for $7. It's been engraved by the previous owner, so shout out to Jim Fitzgerald if anyone knows him but otherwise it's in great used condition. And now that it's done, it's really cool to have on the desk. The wear from like a lifetime of stages and gigs looks really nice and it makes uh, me feel good to use it and have it kind of sitting here uh, to look at. I wanted to leave the DI as original as possible and with the exception of moving a few things around inside, I was able to do that. The transformer and terminal block both needed rivets drilling out and a quick desoldering to reroute the wiring uh, to tuck them off to the side. I'm not planning on using this as a DI again honestly, but no need to be destructive now until it's necessary. Drilling holes for the buttons, my step bit was one size too small, but that's no big deal. I just made up the difference by using a file. It is worth mentioning that this project can be done with much smaller, non-backlit buttons and it makes it all quite a bit easier. This one is for Final Cut Pro, but you can make it out put anything that your keyboard can, including modifiers and non-ASCII characters. You can also add a whole bunch more buttons, you can do analog controls, you can make a keyboard matrix and generally go nuts, and all of that is in that SparkFun article that I'll link below. And again, I use that code with an Arduino board, so a lot of compatibility there and makes it really easy. The Arduino you know, I use because the IDE, the, the interface that you use to program it is incredibly simple. And if you've got a little more skill or a little more time, you can get these same kind of boards. Uh, I've got some knockoffs here for about $5 each. And if you're handy with programming and you want to play around a little bit and not use just the kind of friendly version that Arduino makes uh, for programming these things, you can save a whole bunch of money, make a ton of these things for uh, very little money at all. And this is just to kind of show that it's really not that difficult and you can jump in with whatever you have laying around really. So the micro is neat that it has a five volt output that works really well for driving these 12 volt rated backlight LEDs in these buttons. I'd like to make the backlight pulse or do the old Apple heartbeat pulse in the future, but that's a project for another day. So you wire the backlights all to ground and the 5 volts, so that's pretty simple. The buttons each have a common that's tied to ground with a 10k resistor. Each button then has its center pin, in this case, tied to a data pin on the Arduino. And these buttons here have a center and another pin that allows you to choose between uh, normally closed or normally open. Pre-wiring the buttons with a pair uh, for the light and a separate colored pair of wires for the control connections make wiring everything up in the end really simple. I've used uh, pins 2 and 3 on the Arduino as they're right next to the ground pin and that makes really tidy wiring. Using a socket and a small piece of perf board definitely made this assembly bigger than necessary, but it does allow to swap out the Arduino if something was to go wrong down the line, or if I wanted to use that Arduino in another project, that's really handy to be able to pop them out of your projects and put them into another one. And it also allows to be a little heavy handed in wiring things to the perf board without risking heat damage to your Arduino. You can wire everything up and then just insert the expensive $20 development board right at the end. So it's worth doing in my opinion, even though it does make it slow. Slightly larger. Uh, without the socket in the board, this could have easily fit without modifying the DI really at all, but I like to be able to have that kind of flexibility. So to break it down, we're in about $20 for the development board, Arduino or the SparkFun one. They're both about 20 bucks. Uh, $2 each for these switches is what you can find them pretty common online for, and a couple of dollars for a pair of resistors, some wire, um, and a chunk of project board uh, just to get all that stuff hooked up. So that's under $30 before you find something to put it in, but you'll also need a micro USB cable. And if you don't happen to have like a hundred of those laying around from various things over the years, those are maybe another five to ten dollars so not too expensive definitely not free but it's a fun project to knock together with what you do have laying around and see what you can make out of the extra buttons and switches you can salvage from other stuff 
The old transformer got mounted with double-sided 3M foam tape, and more of that got used to kind of friction fit the new assembly into place. A quick hole with a step bit and file uh, makes it really easy to pass the USB cable through the side without being too destructive. With the buttons wired up and tested for continuity, it is time to move over to the computer. The code I used is the simplest example, like I said in Jim Blom's article. It's linked below and it shows you lots of ways to take a project like this to the next level depending on your needs, your skill level, and the amount of free time you have to spend sorting it all out. A bit of testing back and forth gave me a delay value of 300 that worked better than the specified 1000, but otherwise I found the code worked really well and it was super easy to work with and modify to fit my needs here with only two buttons. I'll be adding to this one, but I always like to take projects like this in kind of small stages. After using it for a few days now, I have a much better idea of how I want to add to it, rather than just adding a whole bunch of stuff right at the start and not really knowing if it's going to be needed. So to start, I needed a transport control, so let's see how we did. Final Cut uses the J, the K, and the L keys as rewind, stop, and forward, respectively. Pressing the forward or reverse keys multiple times increases the speed of playback in that direction, and that's really helpful to us. So in this case, all the buttons have to do is output a keyboard command of the letter K for stop and the letter L to play forward. This is made possible with a simple to use library available for certain Arduino models intended for keyboard emulation. You'll see a line that says include keyboard.h in the linked code, which allows calling keyboard.write to send various characters and commands to the computer as a keyboard would. Everything works as planned so far here. I programmed this on a Windows machine and it is plug and play on Windows and Apple machines. After using it for only a few minutes, I know that I will be adding more buttons to this and building more controllers like this, because the feel of having these like real clicky transport controls again for play and stop is fantastic. It feels really natural. This one works really nice next to my mouse. I'm using the old style magic trackpad and to be able to go. So the way I use my keyboard, you might notice all these little foam things sticking up on my keyboard. And I use that to kind of locate my hands on the keyboard as I'm working. What I end up using a lot of times in Final Cut anyway are these modifiers and I've got different uh, shape pieces of foam here so I can find which one which I use the V key a lot to locate this hand and then on my right hand I use the home the end key and uh, a lot of times enter because it's right next to uh, my uh, mouse so while I'm working here a lot of times I'll be mousing and I will use my thumb to hit enter to do things and this hand will stay primarily kind of floating between the keyboard which does stop and go uh, start and stop and then these uh, modifiers and other shortcuts but it's really nice to be able to just come over here and have a go a uh, speed up a double time and then a stop and then this hand can float between this controller very naturally a really nice tactile uh, switch clicky switch for go and stop and then i can come back for the home button to get return to zero and it's just a very nice natural feeling after a couple of days of using it so i'll be experimenting building more of these adding some buttons this one definitely needs a button like right here and it needs a few other things so I'll be adding to this as we go and I've got some of these other old boxes laying around an old phantom power supply box made in England it's a nice box but the phantom power supply is shot and pretty obsolete for anything I would be doing I've also got some of these old uh, multi-track controllers this one I opened up the other day and it's got an analog wheel it's got a bunch of simple tactile switches and this might be a good candidate I was able to power this up using the bench power supply so that's pretty handy looks fairly simple to see what's going on in there uh, I was able to figure out how to power it pretty quickly so that's uh, got potential I've got an old Clearcom intercom station that I've had for a while and been intending to do a project with, but building a Clearcom box or fixing this when you don't own other Clearcom gear is kind of a pain in the butt, so that could be a potential box for something. It's got a speaker in there. I think it still works, so that's a bonus. Might be something I can do with that that's fun. And this guy, you might remember, got it working with its original machine. Had to make a custom cable. This controller might end up being a project for something else before I get the machines actually doing anything, because uh, just the tape base machines take so many parts so this is pretty cool but way above my head right now as far as getting any of this other stuff working so this is kind of like a way down the line wish list item i did not buy this with that purpose this actually does work with the machine and i have those machines too so i'm not gonna hack this one up soon lots more to come thank you so much for watching and to everyone who has signed up to support the channel and have their name on the founder's wall by contributing ten dollars before december links for that and everything else in the description below and i will see you next time